The gods of Olympus have abandoned me. Now there is no hope. And Kratos cast himself from the highest mountain in all of Greece. After ten years of suffering, ten years of endless nightmares, it would finally come to an end. Death would be his escape from madness. Hello gamers, welcome back to the channel once again as we take a stroll down memory lane. In today's video, we are going to talk about God of War. Not this God of War. No, no, that, that's wrong. Sorry, sorry. I meant God of War. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we are jumping back into the past and we are playing God of War from 2005, which was a must have if you were a PlayStation 2 owner. On a side note, I don't have anything against the 2018 God of War and I realize it has a large fan base, but for me, it just never really connected with me personally like i enjoyed what i played of it but i never really finished the game because the game really never was able to hold my attention all the way through and to be honest with you i could say that with a lot of modern games god of war 2018 visually looks phenomenal but as i'm playing through the game i couldn't help but feel like i'm just playing an interactive movie. I felt like I had my controller down more than I was actually playing. And 10 hours into the game, I just kind of like gave up on it altogether because I just felt like it was just stretching out way too long. And unfortunately, that is sort of the problem I'm having with a lot of modern games where I feel like they're really bloated and they feel more like movies than actual games. I remember games we used to play, like we used to play for a large amount of time and then every once in a while you'd be treated with like a two to five minute cussing. Now it feels like the roles have been reversed where you get these 20 to 30 minute cussings and then you get to play for like two to three minutes. And to me, that's just not fun although i can see the care and depth and detail that was put into the modern god of war game for me i always enjoyed going back and playing the original god of war which funny enough I was actually late to the God of War train. God of War 1, I didn't play until God of War 2 came out. And when God of War 2 came out, everybody kept saying, hey, Rob, have you played God of War? I was like, God of what? I, I never heard of the game. I had no idea what God of War was, but the people I worked with kept praising the game. So when God of War 2 came out, I went ahead and picked up a very cheap copy and I really ended up enjoying the game a lot. Like I said, there's a big contrast compared to the older original God of War and the new modern God of War. And today I just kind of want to go back take a look at the original God of War, the game that started it off, and look at the game that launched Kratos into the video game icon that he is today. But as always, before we jump into the nitty gritty, let's get into the complete in box experience. So now that we got the 2018 God of War out of the way, and we're certainly not talking about God of War 2, let's take a look at the original God of War cover. Uh, me personally, I think God of War 2 is the goaded as the best cover, right? Like this cover is so lame personally. Like again, I'm not trying to take any cheap shots here. Look how lame this cover is. Like, like you have old Kratos and his son, the walking, talking daddy simulator. Why are we doing this now? I need to know you can survive the journey. Then we leave for the mountain? Depends on you. Hunt, what did you find? tracks not deer though okay okay i promise that was the last cheap shot come on guys have a sense of humor this cover has always been my favorite because it just looks awesome seeing kratos from the backside view with the blades of chaos it just it looks awesome it looks badass this cover is fine like it's not my favorite god of war cover but it, it's fine enough you see kratos he's kind of like hunched over and you see he's got the blades of chaos and it's all bloody and all that stuff and it's really cool and then you see in the back some of the mechanics him fighting the hydra and all that stuff and it says you are kratos 
Kratos and you will murder the god of war. And that's basically the whole premise of the game. You are on a quest to defeat and murder the god of war, Eri. So if we open it up, like I said, it's the complete inbox experience, guys. I have the game, I have the manual, everything is good here. Back when manuals actually had color. And this manual is actually really awesome because all the pages are looking like old scrolls, what I really, really like. You know, you have your whole controller settings and then you have the different magic meters and all that great stuff. And then you have like a list of all the monsters as we move forward, like the Blades of Chaos, Zeus Fury. These are all the power-ups and stuff that you can get throughout the game. Pandora's Temple. Oh, we're gonna get to Pandora's Temple because that's when the game takes off to a completely different direction. And it's really, really awesome as you scroll through here because it gives you like detailed information on all the different places and different creatures in the game. And I like that. Like you got the Hydra here and, and you have the Medusa and all those, the Harpies. And that's really awesome. The fact that they go through and they kind of give you some lore that happens within the game with these different creatures and stuff like the sirens. And that's what I really, really enjoyed about this game was the lore of the mythological creatures. And then you have, you know, the different chests and different things you can get like the Gorgon's eye and different collectibles as you go through the game. And that was awesome. And then you kind of get like a little backstory. Here are the people in the ancient world. And you kind of see like Kratos' wife and daughter and how that all relates to him. And then the different gods like Athena and Ares and Artemis and all the different gods. There's so much lore into this game. And it's just a fantastic ride going through this from start to finish. The one thing about the original God of War is when you first start it up, it feels just like a normal hack and slash game. You have your strong attacks, you have your light attacks, you press square to do your light attacks, triangle to do your stronger attack. And Kratos basically feels as if he's just hack and slashing his way through the game. And for the first like hour, that's pretty much how it feels. Like you're just Kratos, you're going through this leaky boat, you're fighting Hydra, you're fighting undead soldiers, and you're just going through the motions of just attacking, dodging, and just ripping your enemies apart because Kratos is absolutely brutal. Like he puts together some massive fatalities and he just does not care. He is going through and he is just slaughtering everyone in his way that is holding him from his ultimate goal of destroying and killing the God of War, Ares. And as you're hacking, slashing your way through the different areas, like I mentioned in the manual, there are different collectibles that you can get. The green chest restores your health. The blue chest restores your energy because as you're going through the game, you pick up different power ups like Zeus's lightning bolt. You get Medusa's head and all the different gods from Olympus end up helping Kratos and give them pieces of their power because they're tired of Ares's shit. And they're like, hey, you know what? Enough is enough. We're going to help Kratos take you down. Artemis. Kratos, the gods demand more of you. You have learned to use the Blades of Chaos well, but they alone will not carry you to the end of your task. I offer you the very blade I used to slay a titan. Take this gift and use it to complete your quest. Take this weapon, Kratos. Take this power and use it to defeat your enemies. So Kratos kind of makes a pact with the gods to take out their brother, but Kratos has his own personal reasons for doing that. Because as you play through the game, you start to get flashbacks on what Kratos' motives are throughout the game. And you realize that in a moment of weakness, Kratos called upon Ares for help right as him and his soldiers were about to get completely annihilated. And basically from there, Kratos is now a servant of Ares. And that leads up into the whole revenge motive when Ares actually tricks Kratos into killing his own wife and kid. My child, how they were left in Sparta. You are becoming all I'd hoped you'd be, Kratos. Now, with your wife and child dead, nothing will hold you back. You'll become even stronger. You will become death itself. 
and from that point forward kratos is just on that mission of revenge and seeking the help of the gods of olympus as he goes through so you get all kinds of different power-ups as you go through the blades of chaos are your default weapons but you do get like a bigger sword toward the middle of the game which i used a lot and you get to upgrade all these different weapons by basically using these red souls that you collect. Every time you kill an enemy, you get red souls. There are certain treasure chests that gives you more red souls and you can level up your weapons. You can level up your power ups. It gives you a sense of progression. As you go through the game, you're constantly progressing your character. You're progressing your move sets. Now I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. You can get through this whole game and just hack and slash your way through the game. I didn't upgrade any of the power moves until the end of the game. I focused on upgrading my Blades of Chaos and my other sword. Once those two were completely maxed out, that's when I started working on the powers because I barely used the powers. I just went through just hacking and slashing my way through the game. I literally went through the game just spamming the square button and dodging a lot. Although there are different move sets and combos and stuff you can learn as you go through the game. Me personally, I was just kind of spamming the light attack button. If I needed to go high attack for a stronger enemy, I would. Well, what's really awesome is as you progress through the game, when you fight like Medusa and the Sirens and all that, you have different type of enemies that require different skills to take out so you do have to switch things up it's just not like you're always going to be able there to keep spamming that square button the whole time because if you do you're not going to be able to progress through the game you actually have to switch up the way you play to try to counteract what those enemies are doing so it keeps you on your toes in that aspect one of my favorite things about the game although it actually really really upset me was the game completely switches on you once you get to a certain point of the game when i got to pan Pandora's temple the game completely changed it went from a hack and slash game to a puzzle platformer and I have to tell you there are some points in this game where it gets absolutely brutal it really requires you to really know your timing and kind of relax if you try to rush through you're not going to get it I died in this game so many times once I reached Pandora's temple, there was a room that had like these giant razor saws that kept going back and forth. And I must have died on that thing at least 20 to 25 times. And unfortunately, there's a lot of different moments like that within Pandora's temple. Even when I got to Hades toward the end of the game and I had to go up these giant towers, I must have died at least 30 to 40 times. And after I died like 50 million times and actually calmed down and relaxed and got into the right mindset and took my time, I was able to reach the end of a lot of these different platforming events because it does get really, really frustrating. I can see a lot of people just being frustrated with it and wanting to say, you know what, I'm done with it. But see, that's to me what separates this game from the 2018 God of War game. I know, I know, I said I wasn't gonna make any more cheap shots, but this isn't a cheap shot. This is just comparing the mechanics of the original game to the newer game. Although the new game does have its fair share of puzzles, it doesn't have that platforming aspect that the original game has. The platforming aspect of the 2005 God of War game is what actually kept me engaged. Because if the whole game was nothing but hack and slash all the way through, I would have found myself easily getting bored three to four hours into the game. But the fact that the development Developer switched it up and made the game not only a hack and slash game but made it a platformer with puzzle solving mechanics in it it kept me engaged the gameplay loop changed so much once I got to Pandora's temple and then really kept me engaged into the game itself I wanted to know Kratos' story and playing this game now in 2024 when I haven't played this game in years it really sucked me back into it and I wanted to finish the game I was like there's no way I'm giving up on this game so I don't care how many times I die I'm going to finish this and I'm going to kill Ares because that SOB needs to die and that's another thing the game does very well 
because as you're playing through the game, you're not getting a whole lot of cinematics like you do with the newer God of War game. You play the game and it's mostly all gameplay. And then after every section or so, you get like maybe a minute or two backstory and they slowly drip feed you Kratos' story leading up to the final battle with Ares. The story never took away from the gameplay. You never really had to put your controller down because by the end of it, when you get the whole picture on exactly what's going on, it makes you that much more eager to take out the final boss, which is Ares. It gives you a great motive of why Kratos is doing what he is doing, and it makes you want to take out Ares even more. And it's very hard for a lot of games to do that. It's like, hey, go take out Bowser. Why? Because he kidnapped Princess Peach again. You know you have to take out Ares, but why do you have to take out Ares? Is it because he enslaved Kratos and made him do awful things? No, it's because he actually manipulated Kratos and had him murder his own family. And forever he has to run around with the ashes of his wife and daughter on his skin. You know, playing this game in 2024, 19 years after its original release, I was kind of skeptical on how this game was going to hold up. I had no idea what to expect jumping in because it's been so long since I played this game. And to be honest with you, I forgot about a lot of this stuff. I forgot about how hard Pandora's Temple was. I forgot about all these puzzles and the platform aspect. When a lot of people think about God of War, you think about Kratos and you think about hacking and slashing your enemies and pulling off some fatalities and brutal kills. But I don't think a lot of people really remember the platforming aspect. And to me, I feel like that's something that a lot of modern games are missing is like that platforming aspect that keeps you engaged and keeps your hand eye coordination and a sense of accomplishment. I, I don't know about you, but after dying a bajillion times, when I reached the top of all those pillars in Hades, I felt a massive sense of accomplishment. I was like, man, I did that. You know, a lot of people would not stick it through, but after dying five million times, I was able to do that and it gives you a sense of accomplishment. And that's what I really enjoyed about the game. It was going back and experience something from my past, a game that was almost 20 years old. I wanted to see how it stacked up today. And I have to tell you, you know, it still looks and plays really good. You can get the remastered version on the PS3. It looks even better. I played it on the PS2 with the Retro Tank 5X hooked up. And I had a fun time just going back replaying the game and there was times where i was playing for like five six hours straight like i'm just gonna play for like 30 minutes and then four or five hours pass i'm like whoa i've been playing this way too long i need to take a break but it just has that gameplay that sucks you in that i feel like again some modern games just don't have today so god of war 2005 does a hold up today Look, I'll just tell you this. I think it's a phenomenal game, even today. A lot of people won't like playing it because of the graphics being so aged. But if you have an open mind, you go back and you just want to play a fun game with awesome hack and slash mechanics, with great upgrading, with great platforming and puzzles, and a unique story of vengeance, I think you're going to enjoy this game a lot. If you want to get something like a retro take and hook it up, you know, hooking this game up with scan lines makes it look that much better like i had a blast for the past week just going back and replaying this game and for me personally i think it holds up i really do i really think it holds up like i said you can pick up the ps3 version which is remastered in hd and the game looks phenomenal on the playstation 3 but in the end these are just my personal thoughts but now i want to hear from you please Leave your comments in the comment box below. What do you think of the original God of War? What is your favorite God of War game in the franchise? Leave your comments in the comment box below. If you're new to the channel, please do me a favor. Smash that thumbs up and subscribe. And tell me what are some of the games you want to see me do next on the channel. And until next time, as always, I am Robert Storms. And thank you so much for watching.